Stardew Valley is a chill and relaxing farming game, but it too can become a bit stressful, with all the mechanics that you need to keep track of as you play. Which crops are the best, which villagers should you befriend, and what to do in your first season of the game. Basically, spring is the most important season for all of the players out there, since it lays out the groundwork for the whole game afterwards. And today, I'll be talking about some of the tips and tricks that you can use in the beginning, as well as a general list of goals you should have for your first season. This guide is not a rulebook which should be followed blindly, but just some general tips that can help you out. The end goal of the game is to have fun, so it's all up to you how you decide to play the game. So let's go! Starting off with the first week. On your first day, you start a game with 15 parsnips that are given to you. And it's good for you to first clear out an area on the farm and just plant all of those parsnips. Afterwards, you just water the crops you planted, grab your site and just go around the farm sighting all of the weeds which in turn will give you fiber and a small chance of mixed seeds, both of which are important for you. The mixed seeds are wonderful since they are a free crop and at the beginning you can find a lot of weeds on the farm, the cinders have forest, next to the community center and also behind Jojo. Those are a random drop so depending on your luck you can start off with a lot of crops. For the fiber it would be a needed material for some of the crafting recipes later on so try to save up as much as you can. As you're going around the valley sighting the weeds you can also pick up all of the forageable items you find. For the spring season these are wild horseradish, the daffodil, leek, dandelion and also the special spring onion which can be found above the sewer entrance in the cinder sap forest. The spring onion is an awesome energy source at the start so don't sell them and just eat them. The four main forageable items are quite special. You can either sell them as they are or just keep them in order to maximize the money you can earn. If you sell them separately you will earn much less than if you crafted them into spring seeds which can be sold for 35 gold each. To craft those you need to have unlocked foraging level 1 and you would need one of each forageable item to craft 10 spring seeds, making them much more expensive to sell crafted. But there's more! If you earn 2 hearts with Caroline and enter the sunroom at Pierre's shop on a sunny day, you will unlock the tea sapling recipe, which needs 2 wild seeds of any kind, 5 fiber and 5 wood to craft. This sell for a whopping 500 gold each, making this a really good source of income for the first season. This gives you a reason to save up all of the forageable items instead of selling them, but still this is up to you. My main goal for foraging is to at least reach level 4 foraging before the 14th of spring and I will tell you later on in the video why. This trick with the tea saplings is more for the middle of the season, since you won't be able to unlock the 2 heart event for Caroline in the first few days. My suggestion is that you should focus giving some of the things you find like the daffodil as a gift to her weekly in order to get to 2 hearts with her faster. Please note that every Sunday the forageable items reset so make sure you make Saturday or Friday a main day to go around the valley foraging for items. Now for woodcutting. Towards the end of day 1 you should focus on cutting down trees in order to get around 50 wood which in turn will get you a spacious storage chest to put all of the items you have. If you do all that by day 2 you should have unlocked foraging level which will give you the chance to get 3 seeds from chopping down trees and to craft the field snack which restores 45 energy. You should always just focus on cutting down the tree and not the stump because cutting down trees gives you foraging experience while the stump doesn't and it's a waste of your energy. Also you should know that the stumps over time spread tree seeds so it's always good to leave them there until you need that space for something else. Day 2 is more relaxing. This is the day that Willy will give you a fishing rod and unlock fishing for you. But before you head on down to the docks, you should pay a visit to Pierre. Here we'll talk a bit about which crops you should focus on for your first season. There are 4 main crops you can plant and you need one of each for the community center. You can buy parsnips which have the shortest growth time but their price is quite low, cauliflower which has a growth period of 12 days and sells for quite a lot, the green bean which takes 10 days to mature and afterwards it produces every 3 days, making this crop the most profitable one. 
but I have to mention that the spot you planted in will be unpassable, since it's on stilts. And the last, the potato, which by me is one of the most useful ones. It takes 6 days to mature and there is a 25% chance of it to produce 2 more potatoes per harvest. From all of these, I would suggest picking up at least 2 or 3 seeds per crop and focus the rest of your funds on either the potatoes or green beans. Also, the second item that's sold by Pierre that you would need to focus on getting is the backpack upgrade. The first backpack upgrade is 2000 gold, so it should be possible to earn that amount in the first 2-3 to three days from fishing, since the crops won't be done yet and the forageable items will be needed for the spring seeds or tea saplings, whichever you decide to do. Afterwards head on down to village shop, pick up the bamboo pole and get to fishing. My general suggestion for this is to fish from day 2 till day 4 around the valley, so you can raise your fishing level and earn a lot of gold while waiting for the parsnips to mature. Fish are needed for the community bundles and the main ones you need to focus on catching are found into 3 areas. River fish, which are the sunfish, 6am to 7pm, the catfish, 6am to midnight on a rainy day and shot. 9am to 2am on a rainy day. For the lake fish it's more preferable to fish in the mountain lake and here you can catch a largemouth bass 6am to 7pm, carp anytime and bullheads also anytime. For the ocean fish we have the sardines 6am to 7pm. And the last are the night fish which are the bream in the river 6pm to 2am and eels in the ocean 4pm to 2am when it rains only. For the crab pot bundle, it's much more easier. Some you find on the beach as forageable items and some you can catch with the crab pots in the rivers and oceans, so feel free to just put a few around the valley after you unlock them. But these are all of the fish that you need for the community center bundles from the spring season. The rest you catch you can immediately sell and just use those money to buy crops or focus on saving up for a backpack or tool upgrade but for those you can focus a bit later on in the season. These few days you can also go around the valley and chop down trees since you would need a lot of it before the end of the season. 300 lumber is needed for the bridge repair and this is something you should repair in your first couple of days before the mines open up, for those extra beach forageable items like corals and sea urchins. And after that you can slowly focus on getting 300 more lumber and 4000 gold before the end of the season. Since then you would need to build the chicken coop and 350 lumber and 6000 gold for the barn. Getting the barn before the end of spring season will be a game changer since the pigs you get at the deluxe barn upgrade are needed before the end of the fall season for the truffles they produce. The more buildings you manage to get in spring the more of a head start you would have for the summer season. And before we head on towards day 5. I should mention that one of the biggest aspects of Stardew Valley is the relationships in the game. You can play the game focusing only on your farm and making it more and more profitable, forsaking the villagers completely. But that would be a mistake. Improving the relationships in the valley is really important, not only because it's needed for the 100% completion, but also because all of those villagers will send you items and recipes in the mail as you improve the relationship with them. Gifting villagers on their birthday can get you a lot of hearts, especially if it's a loved gift, which can boost you up to 3 hearts. You should always check the calendar next to Pierre's shop in order to keep track of the birthdays in the valley, so you should always take a bit of your time to make a trip around the valley and talk to the villagers or give them gifts whenever you can. At the start, loved gifts will be quite hard, but liked ones like daffodils can always make a difference. On day 5 the mines open up and you should prioritize getting all of the minerals as you go down. This is really important as further into the game minerals will be more and more needed and sometimes you would have to revisit floors in order to grind out the needed amount. As you reach level 30 you should focus on upgrading your pickaxe to a copper one since these are the floors where you would need more swings to break open the rocks. Also on day 5 the community center is open up to the player so you should slowly start collecting and filling up all of the bundles that are needed for that. You have 6 main rooms, the crafts room, the pantry, the fish tank, the community board, the vault and the boiler room, which all need different items to complete. For the spring season it's important to get 5 golden star parsnips, 
one of each spring crop as well as one of each spring forageable item. For the fish, I already mentioned them before, so you know which ones to focus on catching. Afterwards you can play slowly day by day saving up gold for the main event, which happens on the 14th of spring, and that is the egg festival. This festival is important, as you can buy the strawberry seeds, which are one of the best crops for the spring season. They cost 100 gold each, and you should save up enough gold to purchase a lot on that day. Getting a lot of strawberries will make your start in the summer season amazing, so you should definitely try to get as much as possible. And after the 14th, we are moving on to the second half of spring. On the 15th of spring, there is the salmon berry season, which lasts till the 18th of spring. This is the prime period where you can get a lot of free food for energy, which can last you until the second half of summer. For this, it would be best to get foraging to level 4, since it will give you 2 salmon berries per bush. So you should make walking down the valley and gathering all of the salmon berries a priority for these few days. And speaking about foraging, at level 3 you unlock the tappers, and these are something that you need to put on trees really early on. The maple syrup, oak resin and pine tar are needed for most of the crafting recipes in the game, as well as for the bundles in the community center. So try to get at least one of each placed on the trees on your farm in order to have enough to craft artisan equipment later on in the summer or fall season. After you manage to earn around 20,000 gold on your farm, Demetrius will show up and offer to make your farm cave into a fruit bat cave or a mushroom one. I always suggest getting the mushroom cave since it's more useful in the long run. But if you're playing on the forest farm, you should choose the bat cave since the mushrooms will randomly spawn on the forest farm and you won't need the cave. Also in the second half of spring, you should focus on upgrading your tools as far as you can. The watering can is the most important one and you should always upgrade it when there is rain incoming the following day. If you do that, it will be ready on the third day and you can water your crops without missing a day. The second tool you need to upgrade is the pickaxe. You should have an upgrade for this one shortly after the 15th, if you want to save up for those strawberry seeds which in turn will make getting all of those materials much more easier. The steel pickaxe is good to get after reaching around level 50 in the mines, but that should be done only after getting the watering can and axe to copper stage at least. Upgrading the pickaxe to steel level would make mining a lot more easier. Also, the steel pickaxe would allow you to break down the wall to the dwarf or if you have a cherry bomb, it can also do the trick. You can't talk to him yet, but you can give him gifts at least. And the third tool is the axe, which you need to upgrade to copper in order to cut down the logs on the farm, which give you hardwood. The steel quality axe can be used to get access to the secret woods, increasing your daily hardwood farm. The 1.5 update added the mahogany seeds, which make it much more easier to get hardwood where you can just plant the tree on your farm and wait. As I mentioned, even though the steel one is quite good, if you're low on resources for everything, you can focus on the steel level in the summer season. So towards the end of the season, I would suggest you save up all the gold you have in order to buy new seeds in the summer season. That way you would have a really great start with the more expensive crops. And also, would be able to get the flowers and start making flower honey as well. The last week you should also focus on getting some of the trees which are needed for the community center, like an apple tree or a pomegranate, which needs a whole season to grow, so getting some of the fall ones in spring will make them ready before fall kicks in. So there you have it, this is my complete guide on the whole spring season covering only the most important things you need to know, which can help you out at the beginning. I'm in no way telling you how the game is supposed to be played, since it's all up to you to enjoy Stardew Valley in the way which offers the most entertainment and fun for you. I just wanted to give a general direction to everyone as to what are the most important things that you could focus for a more better start. But everyone, I hope this video helped you out a bit and if I missed anything let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to see more content like this feel free to subscribe to my channel in order to get notified of my future updates. I cover some cozy Stardew Valley Let's Plays as well as other games on my channel, so feel free to check it out. I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you all in my next one. But till then, stay safe!